Good morning, folks. We've got a lot of key studies today, including some that begin to really change the game of key fields of science. We'll begin with our star over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the two bright regions, the active areas near center disk, still have small sunspots within them, but there's not much development or flaring. We have some coronal holes on the disk, but we also had an eruption. The large plasma filament draped across the Earth-facing polar crown lifted up and erupted northward. The polar filaments usually erupt north and south and don't much affect the planets, but they can signal an uptick in the magnetic strength of our star, just like the appearance of those active regions. Solar wind, magnetometer, and KP index here. All is quiet in the solar wind plasma stream and Earth's magnetosphere. We've got to look ahead to tonight. As we mentioned yesterday, the storm systems here are going to fire up in a big way near sunset. Eyes on those. And the same goes for southeastern Australia. This will develop closer to when we speak again tomorrow. A couple quick notes from around the solar system. Laser moon studies by a CubeSat are poised to better measure the chemistry inside the lunar craters, including the water ice trapped within them. Speaking of water ice, Comet Borisov is on its way out of the solar system, while having slightly different water production and falloff after perihelion than solar system comets, this interstellar comet still has many of the telltale signs of the comets we study from within our own system. Venus up next, and its super rotation is maintained via powerful solar heating. Earth has super rotation too, it just means the atmosphere whips around faster than the rotation of the planet. And if you could take out the feral and polar cells of Earth's atmosphere and stretch the Hadley cells to the polar regions, that's pretty much what we've got at Venus. Quick climate notes here. First, that record March ozone hole in the north just had a record recovery. As the planet's tilt brings the north further into the light of the sun during this phase of our orbit, the UV light begins to rapidly create ozone from the chemistry already there. The quickness of the recovery could be due to Earth's weaker magnetic field, letting in more UV light to create those particles. Interesting story up next, entrenched in the mainstream climate story, but which still gives us a hint about other topics we cover. Not only can animals survive climate change by heading up the mountains, but that's one of the best moves during any major Earth catastrophe, whether it's the 12,000 year cycle event or one of the millennial cycle subharmonics. We'll come back to climate, but first let's do some astrophysics. A new paradigm shift is being put forth using astroseismic light curves. It is not a good picture for the established astrophysical paradigm. Maybe the light isn't from what they think it's from. If this is the case, as the study is suggesting, it completely rewrites what's going on just below the surface of these stars. But it gets better. Because we need to take that paradigm shift all the way to the core and totality of solar dynamic physics. High energy density plasma just does not behave the way they believed it would, which marks a great bit of progress in science. Just a shame it came after they've solidified their hypotheses on stellar dynamos, black holes, etc. It's all going to have to change as the dipole selection rule breaks down at those physical scales. And let's quickly check in with Sensei on its ongoing search for dark matter. Still nothing? Okay. Good, because I want to get back to this dipole thing we just mentioned. After our recent videos discussing a dipole structure to the universe, one professor emailed me and said, just you wait. Turns out they've got evidence that electromagnetic forces don't appear any more isotropic than expansion. The universe has a dipole structure to it as this non-homogeneous presentation of the fundamental force looks different in different directions, almost like a directionality or flow to the universe in only one direction. Well, what does this mean? It means our entire cosmic web and visible universe may all be part of a pipeline moving together through a larger cosmic filament tube on our way to somewhere, but all together. Glad I waited. Folks, last night we put out part one of Solar Superstorms. We feature numerous experiments from the Yelverton Plasma Lab, and it is a doozy. We'll be getting part two out tonight, Super Flare versus the Micronova. Last but not least, perhaps some of you saw this headline article in Nature. Nearly the entire article is balderdash. Call it lazy if you want, but I would like to just copy and paste my response to a congressional select committee when they tried to get Google to take down my YouTube channel, which failed obviously, but scenario number four, if you are new here, you really need to see that one. It's in your link list below the video today. We greatly appreciate your support. 
Website members, if you need to catch up on your Deeper Look episodes, I do it soon. We're blasting through some great material, and last night's Deeper Look is sort of part one and a half in these solar superstorm videos we're getting started here. We've got your wind map forecast and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.